but I did have an opportunity to um, have a conversation with them on two occasions. And I have to admit, even though they were not long conversations, they did leave their impact on me. I'm, you know, when I think back, it's probably 20 years ago, and I still remember them very clearly. Uh, he was a man of um, very direct, very focused. Uh, he was calling me about to ask some questions about some project that he was working on. He was gathering information. And I remember just being very taken aback, almost a question, if I can use that word, um, because he would hit things right on the nose. He knew what he, was, he wanted, he needed. And I could see he thought big. He thought outside the box. And that those were two con brief conversations. So that's my impact. Uh, my um, sort of recollections of him, you know, the, the, the man, the philanthropist. Who, you know, never had really the pleasure or the opportunity to really know Mr. Yatsik. Um, I think the more I look back at all that he has done, uh, I am beyond amazed that one person, one person who came to Canada with nothing, was able to inspire, to develop so much, to give back so much. And, and, and I keep coming back to, he was a visionary and strategic in a way that many others are not. And I think that is something that, um, you know, whenever I do in my own work, uh, within the foundation. I look back to people like him, to people like Manoli Lupul, to people like Petro Savarin. They were icons in the community. And I, whenever I'm discouraged, I think of them and they make, and they kind of remind me why I'm doing what I'm doing because there, yes, um, there is a road and we need to follow that. Basically, encyclopedias provide information, and that is, you know, it doesn't get any more essential than that. Um, there, uh, we have always been, uh, when I say we, the Ukrainian-Canadian community, probably Ukrainian community, Ukrainian diaspora, uh, that has always been our, one of our bigger um, worries, concerns, complaints, that the information about Ukraine and about Ukrainian things at large has very often been subject to misinformation or not fully well presented or lacking in, in some ways. So what better way than you know having this in an encyclopedia? So we had, first of all, the paper uh, volume of the uh, encyclopedia, and now we live in an information age um, and everything's driven digitally. So that is that was the only the natural step to go to, um, how to disseminate this information, information that is robust, uh, objective, that is academically grounded um, and complete. So um, this, you know, for us we're at, at, at uh, the Canadian Foundation for Ukrainian Studies was a, a natural project to, to support, to embrace. We believe in it very strongly. And it does continue and build on what Mr. Yatsik started. As I said, he thought big, he thought boldly. And, um, you know, he hit it right on the nose. I'm not a historian, but from, you know, I have heard from other historians and other academics who work in that field who say that this, the Hrushevsky history was one of the most important critical history works um, produced. And up till now was available only in Ukrainian. So if you had scholars who did not fully understand Ukrainian, not everyone who works in Ukrainian history may be fluent in Ukrainian, um, they would have not had access to this information. So this project makes available to really, I mean, English is an international language. So it makes it available broadly to all historians. Um, and from what I've heard is that it has made a lot of historians now rethink how they analyzed um, or how they interpreted certain eras uh, in uh, European history, because now they have this access to this Ukrainian uh, history, which really makes them rethink their, their work. So it, to me, it sounds pivotal. And again, you know, when you think Mr. Yatsik, this was a very bold and strategic um, initiative because 
you make the change here and it influences right across the board. So, um, so yeah, so we were very happy that we were able to contribute to, to support and be part of this initiative. Um, it, it really is, um, I would put it on a very high level, uh, along with the Encyclopedia of Ukraine, another very pivotal piece of work. Um, I find that, um, well, maybe it's not the only one, but one point is convincing people that just because Ukraine is independent doesn't mean that there is no need for Ukrainian studies in Canada or in the States or in any other country. Uh, you know, there are French studies and Italian studies at almost every university in the world. Uh, and yet those countries have been around for a very long time and they're stable democracies. So Ukraine is just, you know, and even if Ukraine was a stable democracy for a long time, we, Ukrainian studies is important. Uh, it's a living thing. It evolves. It's not something that is like in the museum and it, uh, it has been frozen in time. So. Um, you need, it's the living thing, you, it has its place on the global kind of international um, platform. You need to have it at, you know, at the university level. Uh, any healthy community needs to have, it needs to see itself grow and develop and academic um, research is a very important part of that. It's a way we get to we know ourselves and, and a community that doesn't know itself you know, risks in, in, its, in its development. Uh, so that, I think, I find that whenever I'm speaking to people, sometimes they will say, well, Ukrainian studies, now you can go to Ukraine. And, and the whole thing is, is, no, Ukrainian studies is important in Canada, regardless of what's happening elsewhere. Mm -hmm.